so my information will certainly not be a kind of the, the teaching type of thing. We, we cannot tell you how to do things, but we'll, we can tell you from our experience and what we feel, what the necessary ingredients are and what resources to draw uh, on. Okay, perfect. So yeah, maybe if you could sort of take us back, maybe, I don't know how far back your experience with the community goes. And Oh, okay, the history, of course, of Freiburg goes back into the Middle Ages, and if we wanted to delve into that, we could draw some connections. <laughs> I prefer to go back as far as the mid-1970s. Uh, in a way, this is when it all this was when it all started. Uh, there were plans at the time to set up a nuclear power plant um, power station not far from Freiburg, something like 20 miles uh, from here, and this caused wide uh, resistance from the population, not only from the students, of course, it, it, plays, a role, it, it, it plays a role that uh, Freiburg is a university city, but the unique thing was that you had farmers and wine growers participating in the not just demonstrations, they occupied the building site and it was, uh, yeah, it was at times it was almost a situation like civil war and in the end that battle was successful so that nuclear station uh, was never built. And then it started. Resistance against one form of energy is one thing and then you start looking for alternatives. And this is what they did uh, actually on the building site in the mud why mud from the water cannons of the police, of course. <laughs> uh, they tried to get experts who could tell them uh, something of where, where could you find other sources of energy, solar for example. And what is it now, 30 years, not much. But at the time the state of the art was something that somebody had heard that if you wired uh, or if you welded or, or soldered some copper pipes and it, it would might produce hot water and it was that type of thing. But but it didn't take long and some people realized that um, so while solar energy was very much a niche thing and in a way still is today, there is an opportunity for the development, actually economic development, of Freiburg in that. Freiburg has no major industry, so some people said, is this not a thing of the future? Some form of high technology is coming up here, and wouldn't it be a good thing if Freiburg was on the lead there? And shortly after the, um, this nuclear power plant um, debate, uh, the Fraunhofer Institute of Solar Energy Systems was set up here Professor in Götzberger, who was the founder of the Fraunhofer Institute of Solar Energy Systems here in Freiburg. I was ridiculed at the time. Nobody thought this was serious scientific business. Today, Fraunhofer Institute here in Freiburg is the largest solar research institute in Europe. Grassroots um, or bottom-up <laughs> Development is certainly the correct description, but of course you should not think that, at least in those days, you had the majority behind, uh, let's say, alternative forms of energy. Not really. Uh, what, uh, rather, there were some visionaries like Professor Götzberger, who I already mentioned, the um, Dr. Böhme, who was Lord Mayor at the time and who did pretty much to attract industries or institutions here to Freiburg. For example, he brought uh, ICES, the International Solar Energy Society, here to Freiburg and they, they have their <laughs> world headquarters here. So you have know-how and expertise concentrated and then the majority of the population becomes to realize that this is a kind of a success story and they develop pride in that. For example, we are sitting here at our information desk of Forum Solar Region Freiburg. Why did we put this up? It is because we had to cater for the vast number of visitors who come to Freiburg to have a look at 
uh, solar projects, other environmental achievements as well. We should not look at the at this story which I just told you um, as an energy thing only. As a matter of fact, this was the the beginning of the entire new environmental movement here in Germany. In a way, metaphorically speaking, the um, uh, the birthplace of the Green Party was here. In, it was not founded in Freiburg, but it was here in Freiburg where it all originated in 1992 or thereabouts. Freiburg was officially awarded the title environmental capital of Germany. Now we are um, on uh, position number one in what they call Solar Bundesliga. It's kind of modeled after the soccer uh, competition and a competition between cities uh, calculating the number of solar installations per capita and so on and of course we, <laughs> we are the leaders. And now this does not go unnoticed by the wider public who uh, you cannot assume that they are major enthusiasts um, uh, from the outset, but they willingly participate and they see there is, there is something, and this is probably what you are interested in, um, there is something, a nucleus for a kind of identity. Freiburg people think of themselves if I may say so, as something special, something a little bit apart, not just like the average yeah. Germans. And here is here is the thing: you can connect your own uh, identity with this solar thing. The most difficult part is always money. <laughs> not only in Freiburg, it's the same thing. Um, solar energy is obviously one of the most expensive <laughs> forms of energy and you have to to generate or raise funds for that so and this is where uh, let's say the enthusiasm of at least some people maybe some idealists come uh, comes into play um, we have a quite renowned solar installation on the soccer pitch of SC Freiburg. By the way, this was the world's first <laughs> sports ground with uh, solar equipment. But what is even more uh, important is the way of financing. People, individual citizens, could buy shares, not of the operating company, but literally shares of the installation, let's say uh, you could buy uh, some uh, square meters of um, of the of the photovoltaic panels. So all of these citizens then became small-scale electricity producers, and this is why it was so important that the equipment was set up on one of the most renowned places next to the cathedral, I suppose. Uh, the, the sports um, uh, stadium, because uh, if you hide it somewhere in an industrial area, it's it's it doesn't do something for your pride. But you want to you want to see your thing and say this is and, and I hold a share in that, and also as an incentive, mm -hmm. uh, as an incentive, you got a yearly ticket for the home matches of SC Freiburg. <laughs> uh, on top of that. So this kind of jo joint ownership scheme was first developed here, uh, developed here in Freiburg. It has now been widely replicated. For example, um, many of the wind turbines that you see uh, got their financing uh, from, from similar schemes. Other forms have developed uh, since. Um, we have, as, as necessary preconditions of, of success, we have five big C's, cost, comfort and control. You have to have reasonable costs. People are prepared to pay a little more. Obviously 10% is something like a critical margin. They are prepared to pay something more, but not endlessly more. Comfort, things must fit to the lifestyle. If 
for example, new uh, renewable energies make things complicated, uh, uh, create difficulties. If it takes years to get planning permission, years to find out what kind of uh, subsidies you can get, and further years to get the subsidies, then just forget it. <laughs> and control. Uh, people want to have control or see their own control over the effects. If you pay a little more for your green electricity tariff, then you want to see exactly where the money goes. So these, these are the three C's from the citizen's perspective and from our uh, municipal policy perspective it's consensus and cooperation.